What's up, my good people? I got Kareem Jackson calling in, trying to get it, trying to get him connected to the show. We're going to be on in one second. He is here. I'm looking at him right now. Just got to get him connected to the show. We'll be right with you. Yes, it's going down tonight. K Jack will be in the building. Be right back. Gotcha. Yo, it's always something, man. My dog Reem is in the building. He is trying to get pulled up so we can have a good time, man. Appreciate you guys joining me on this good Friday night, man. It's Friday night, and we got Mr. Flex Friday in the building. Here we go. I think I just... Hey, cool.
Can y'all hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Okay, I think y'all can hear me. It's just all for audio. Just all for audio to me. It sounds awful, but we might just have to work with it. We might just have to work with it. Ring, can you hear me? Let me get Ring, see if he can hear me. Ring, can you hear me? You got me now? All right, I'm going to try. I'm going to try one more time. The audio sounds good. You got me good? All right, let me uh, let me fix all my shots real quick. Y'all say y'all can hear me. I can hear me. We are good. Let me get this echo out of my ear so that you guys can still hear me. All right, man. The audio sound good. Guys, I don't know what in the world that be going on. System be working quite fine all day long, man. And then all of a sudden, we get some, uh, some nonsense. You know what I'm saying? So, but... Bear, bear with me a little bit. We're going to have to uh, probably have to fix a couple shots to get the audio right because I got several shots lined up. But we're going to get through the show at the end of the day. We trying to uh, we trying to get this thing right and let me start back over. So I appreciate you guys joining me on this Friday night. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So we're going to jump right into the show, okay? I don't want to take up too much of your time. I got Kareem Jackson on Denver Broncos safety. He's here, and it's going to be an incredible show. He got a lot of good things to talk about, and I'm excited to hear them, okay? Okay, so if you guys don't know, my name is Glover Quinn. I was a former uh, Pro Bowl defensive back, played for Texans and the uh, Detroit Lions, so that is my background. Now I'm your host here in the DB room. Okay. It's fun to be able to welcome you guys to the DB room. I don't even want to click on the, the DB room intro because I don't want nothing bad to happen. Okay. So let me start off by saying I hope you guys had a phenomenal Memorial Day weekend, man. I hope you guys stay safe. I know it's a tough time right here in the corona, but I hope you guys had a, a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. It's a it's an honor to be able to you know think about and and honor those guys who who gave their life for our freedom. Man, during my time in the NFL, you know we would always honor you know that hometown hero that served and um, you know had the whole crowd standing. And it's always just you know an incredible moment to see everybody everybody up on their feet. You know my grandfather served during World War II. Um, my brother-in-law served, several of my friends have served during, you know, this Iraq war. Um, so we're very appreciative of those, of the ones who have served and, and, you know, the ones currently serving. Um, I, I can't say it enough. You know, I've had many teammates throughout my career that, you know, chose to do a lot of work with the military as part of their charities. And, you know, I've done a lot of things with them, collabed, and, you know, we try to do a lot okay to help those families um and right now what we're trying to do what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to help um with united way united way was a was a charity that that does great work and i had the pleasure to work with them on my years in in detroit and now you know we're trying to help in this current situation um that is the COVID 19 we already know what is going on with that okay so this is what we're doing. We teamed up, United Way, a bunch of NFL players um, to engage the fans. 
while raising money to help the communities impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? We only have a few days left. I think Monday is the last day. Each player is trying to raise 50K, okay? 50K for their community. So that takes 5,000 people giving at least $10, okay? And you can make a huge, huge difference in your community, okay? How it works, go to the website, United Way, uh, United Way Virtual Hangouts, um, and you click on my picture. I put the link in the, in the comments, you know, donate at least $10, and you got a chance to win, okay? This is what you can win with me. These are my prizes. You can win a Q&A session, okay, one-on-one, -on -one, me and you. You can win a workout session. Zoom, we'll work out, have a good time, okay? You can win some story time. Maybe you got having tr tr trouble putting your kids to bed. You want me to read them the story? I'll read the kids a story, okay? You, we can do some video tutorials. I, I, I mess around with the, the stuff. Obviously, I'm not a uh, audio guy, but we can we can talk about that stuff. We can do some skills and drills. You know, I can put together some uh, skills, some some drills to help you become a better safety, become a better football player, basketball player. Uh, I played a couple sports in my days. Or you know, the same way we got Mr. Kareem Jackson on the show tonight. You can be on the show. You can come into the DB room and sit down and chat with me, okay? So that's some cool stuff that I hope you guys are able to, um, you know, go and, and, and donate. And that is a great, 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 great cause, man. That's a, you know, I can't stress it enough how, um, you know, how great it is. And I hope you guys donate to, to help us out. Okay, so, like I said, man, I like to do these shows and let you guys know more players, obviously, for who we are, not just what we do. I've said that over and over. Um, here are stories, you know, that made us who we are. The person that you see on TV, it's a lot behind that. It's a lot that went into that, you know what I'm saying, to see what you see, okay? Also, I like to motivate people, inspire people. So if you know someone that needs to hear these stories and see these Send it to them. Share it. Okay. Everybody probably knows somebody that's that's on this journey and and can use it. Okay. So with all that being said, let's get into the show, man. Oh, what a big time hit by Jackson. dope man once again shout out to my man dave keon for putting that dope highlight intro together for my guy kareem jackson from macon georgia a dear friend of mine man that i had the pleasure of meeting back in 2010 when he was selected first round by the houston texans someone i have watched grow from a young rookie to an 11 year nfl veteran man he beat the odds by many 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 years man my friend my brother K Jack, Jack Boy, Ring Boy, oh yeah, it's Fre it's it's Friday, right? It's Mr. Flex Friday, Denver Broncos safety, Kareem Jackson. Hey man, I, I I appreciate that intro. I appreciate that intro, man. Thanks for having me on, man. Man, it's an honor, man. What is good, bro? How you feeling? Oh, man, it's a, it's an honor to be on with you, my guy. Uh, you got some good stuff going, man. I, I'm I'm feeling great, feeling great, man. And like you said, man, it's it's Friday, Flex Friday, so just hanging out, man. Um, uh, that's that's about it right now, man. Just hanging <laughs> out, man. Man, I'm glad you took some time on your on your Flex Friday, man, to, to jump on this show, man. I definitely appreciate that, and I know. I know the fans are going going to appreciate that as well, man. Tell me, how, how did Flex Friday get started, though? Where did that come from? Um, man, honestly, man, it just um, this is just was a celebration of mine, man. And I just been kind of doing it for years. And one day, and I'm just like, man, Friday, I flex when I, you know, make a play. So 
Flex Friday, man. That's that's you know that's what Friday gonna become for me, man. And then I kind of, you know, I just started posting pictures of you know of me flexing and stuff after I make a play, and it's, I called it Flex Friday. And then like maybe like a like a month ago, I just wanted to get the fans involved and stuff. And I was just like, man, listen, man, y'all y'all post y'all fa- oh well, send me you guys favorite edit, man, and whichever one's my favorite, I'll post it on my um my social. And so. From there, man, it's, it's it's just try to make it fun, you know. For me, I'm a I'm one of those guys. I play with a lot of energy, man, and you know, celebrating and, and flexing like that in front of the fans, man. It's kind of you know, poor. Just kind of get my fire, you know, burn a, a little hot out there, man. So that's that's how I started. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. So if you want to join in on the Flex Fridays, man, every Friday on Instagram. Uh, I'm not on Twitter, but every Friday I see it on Instagram, my guy. Is doing his flex Friday, man, and and, and it's it's cool, man. It's great to see. So I know you got two beautiful daughters at home, man. I got obviously three wild boys, man. You know my boys. You know we've been fully submerged in homeschool, and honestly, bro, I just can't wait for next week for us right. to be over. You know what I'm saying? I just can't. It, it can't come fast enough, man. But, exactly. You know, you've been at home with the fam, man. How, how has it been, you know, for you, man? And like, you know, it's, do, uh, do you guys have like any homeschool going on, or you know, what I'm saying what y'all got going on? Um, it's 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 actually been a, a cool time, man. Um, I mean, obviously, like you said, two two little girls. My well, my youngest being one, my oldest being four, and they're not actually to the point where they're, you know actually going to school but um just trying to do a little stuff here and there you know, just kind of keep their brains you know stimulated and you know learning you know different stuff you know um <clears throat> my oldest uh I'll actually be starting um a, a pre-k program when she turns turns five but she was in a head start program but just just little stuff here and there just try to keep her brain stimulated and you know little um you know, she has these little games and stuff where she can learn. You know, they're always connected to these. Uh, she she has an iPod, so it's always little learning things on her iPod and stuff, man. So we're trying to get my, my one-year-old just kind of following her footsteps and little things so she can learn as well. But uh, they've both been having, you know, um, a little bit of time each day. But other than that, man, they've been dragging me around the house, um, dragging me outside, you know, once I finish my workouts, man. Just um, – a thousand miles per hour, man, nonstop, man. Um, that's that's pretty much been what it's been in this house. Man, I already know, man. I already know we got, you know, our kids are definitely in the technology, man. It's crazy how they they've learned to to be into the technology, bro. And I mean, it's 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 it's, it's going to definitely help them because right. everything is going technology. I couldn't imagine being in this in this time period right now without technology. Heck, we couldn't even be on this call or whatever you want to call it right, right now without technology and understanding technology. So that's very important, man. Tell me, bro, what, what's it been like, you know, being in Houston, and, you know, but you play in Denver, so you got the team out there. You probably got, you know, a spot out there. Things going on out in Denver, man. What has it been like, you know, trying to bridge all that together from Houston? Uh, it's actually – Honestly, man, I mean, for me, you know, being an 11-year vet, man, we, we've been doing everything virtually. So, for me, I just kind of told them, like, hey, this this should be phase one every year. Like, <laughs> virtually, let's do this virtual thing every year. So, because this is like, you get a chance to work out where you want to work out, you know. Um, I mean, although, you know, the training staff and, you know, the um, – um, I mean, everybody does a great job, but at the same time, I mean, it's a little bit different when you get a chance to work out where you want to work out at. You know, you get a go- get a chance to go through the routine you want to go through, uh, that you're accustomed to, and 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 that you know is going to that you know going to get you to that point where you need to be. And not not a, not only that, but you know, and having to leave a city that you've been in for nine years, it's hard to ask you know your kids and stuff to pick up and leave. So it's just like. All right, well, you guys can stay put, and you know if I can do everything virtually, I can stay put too, and 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 from there work out where I want to work out at. But um, I mean, it's 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 been, I think with everything going on, they've been making it easy for us. With like I said, with the virtual stuff on, on on Zoom and stuff like that, and like I said, man, I've 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 grown to be a fan of it. But um, it's it's obviously a unique time for us, and you just 
you know, for the most part, just had to make do, man. And, I mean, because, you know, like I know, I mean, we would be, you know, in whatever city that we play in and, and going through whatever meetings and on the field activities or doing whatever, you know, about four or five hours a day, you know, and, and at the same time, I mean, you went through the same thing I went through last year with, you know, leaving the family behind and being in a, in, in another city. So it's uh, it's a unique time, man. But and for the most part, you know, to to, to grow and to, to be able to see your kids grow on a daily basis, man, it's it's been great in that aspect. But at the same time, I mean, for younger guys, they may need it. But for older guys, it may be, you know, something where, like, we're fine where we are. Right. I mean, I know we definitely, we definitely, you know, like the fact that we can stay at home and, and get some work done, especially being, you know, an 11-year guy. I remember, right. you know, I remember back in 2000, and I guess it was 11, we had the lockout. I mean, right. that probably was the best offseason, just being able to stay at home and work out where you want to, do the things that you wanted to do. And, exactly. And, you know what I'm saying, show up and be ready to play. You know what I'm saying? But you mentioned you mentioned in there right there that, you know, you left the Texans after nine years, man, with the team. You left and signed with the Denver Broncos. How was that transition, man, like going from, from Houston for so many years – and then now you got to introduce yourself to a new fan base, a new team. Uh, how was that transition for you, man? Did you need that change of scenery? Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I don't think, you know, as, as, as far as players, I mean, when, when guys like to ask you, did you need that, you know, that change of scenery? It's almost like you turn the deal down, you know, or something like that, you know. And you know, like I know, man, like, you want to stay put, but at the same time, you know, everything has to match up. You know, it has to be right terms. You know, it has to be right money if if you're performing at a high level. But at the same time, some guys don't get that opportunity. And and for me, my situation, I was never, you know, uh, awarded that opportunity. So, you know what I mean? But, um, I mean, to, to go to Denver, man, it's, it's, it's been great. You know, the transition has been great. The city's been great. The fans have been great, man. They've been – they welcomed me with open arms. You know, I've had a chance to go to a, a great situation and, you know, stepping in and playing, you know, full-time safety in my first year, you know, and the coaching staff that, you know, um, I mean, saw me as a guy coming in to, that could play multiple positions. And, you know, just we just kind of – early in the year I started out playing multiple positions, but, you know, we kind of got some guys back healthy and then – they let me kind of settle in that in, in, in one position. But um, and I always tell people, man, it's great to be wanted. So, you know, that yeah. means doing some some things right, man. It's, it's like I say, it's, it's, it's always great to be wanted, man, because that scenario would be different if I, I, I didn't have, you know, options. I didn't have a team that wanted me, man. And from the first day in free agency, man, Denver, you know, Denver stepped up and they let it be known that, you know, they wanted me and, you know, it was – it was gonna, you know, spare no expense to 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 let it be known that they wanted me a part of the organization, man. And and ever since I've been there, it's been great, man. The organization's been great. Like I said, the fans, it's a great city, man. And you know, I enjoy it there. And and and, and I mean, I can't say enough about that city and the way they embrace me and you know my my teammates there as well. So you know, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to year two there, and it's it's, it's been a lot of fun. Man, that's that's crazy, man. I know. Um, that had to feel good, man. I, I remember the same, going through the same thing, man. You just, you just never know, man. And so when you can be welcome, you know, obviously with open arms, man, it got to feel good. And I tell people all the time, man, like you said, it's great to be wanted, man. It's man, great. It is. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes that's even greater than the money, bro. Like you go somewhere where they want you, they're going to let you they, do what you do, right? What Where they want you, man. And they're going to let you be yourself. They're going to let you play ball. And it's just it's just a great feeling, man. And and it's almost like you, it's it's a it's a it's a family thing, man. You because you go there and it's just like, all right, Kareem, like you know they already know you're a veteran guy, and they just let you be yourself. You know, it's no restraint. And like I said, man, it's 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 always great to be wanted, man. And 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 that was the situation that I went into, man. And it's and. Ever since I've been there, when I went there to sign my deal the first day, man, I think it might have been like five degrees when I went there. And ever since then, man, it's just been a warm feeling, man. And everything's been great, man. And, I, and, I, and I've been loving it there. 
too. I, I already know, but I remember going to Detroit my first year out there, and it was probably May, April, and it was still snowing. So I know, I know yeah. that's that's crazy. <laughs> I remember you right. seeing pictures last year about it snowing uh, right. when we first got out there. But you mentioned something earlier about uh, you know since we're talking transition, we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot of transitions because. That's kind of been a theme for for you as I look back over uh, some of the things that you that you've dealt with. So we're going to talk a lot of transitions that you had to deal with, so you can let everybody know how you deal with all those transitions. So we we you you mentioned earlier that you played nine years as a corner, you know, and then right. you get moved to safety. Tell me about that transition. Obviously, I made this transition, but I didn't do it after nine years. You know, I only played two years at corner, so you right. you was um, nine years deep. How, how did how, how did you make that transition? Or was it something that like you always felt that you could do because of your physical like style of play? Right. Um, man, I didn't realize it was only two years. I thought you I thought you played like four or five before you actually went to the safety spot. Uh, but um, as soon as Wade got there. Man. But it I mean but anyway, um uh, it was uh I think for me, man, because of my physical play, it was always something I knew I could do. Even, you know, dating back to high school with, in which I was an offensive guy, but if I, w- I was a guy that they plugged in in different scenarios on defense. So I would play safety here, you know, if they needed me to play. I would play corner here if they needed me to play. You know, just in certain situations. And then, um, um, and, and even being in Houston, we had certain packages where I would play safety. So, in my mind, you know, um, and, and, and going into year four with them moving me to the slot position, just knowing that, you know, I could play, you know, multiple positions. But, I, I mean, I, I think with my style of play, I always knew I was going to be a tackler. I was always a hitter. You know, I, I, I could cover. So it was just like, you know, um, it, it was just for me, it was just all about switching my mindset, you know, just knowing where I was lining up at, whether it was safety, whether it was that slot, you know, whether it was that corner, you know, just uh, – just knowing and, and 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 recognizing where I was on the field, but um, it was I think it was a, a pretty smooth transition because when I first signed to Denver, they didn't really know if I was going to play a corner or I was going to play the safety spot. But like I said, you know, through the test of time and, and and over the years, just just having experience in all three spots, I I knew you know I would I would be comfortable playing in any spot. Heck yeah, man, that's dope, man. You've been balling, bro. You've been balling, man. I uh, appreciate cool. that. It's been cool to check you out, man. You always been smacking, man. I remember, I remember when your rookie year, it might have been your rookie year, show you jumped off the trampoline on one of them old linemen coming around that corner. I, I remember the old lineman name. I, I'm not gonna call his name just 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 to protect uh, him. Right. But, uh, right. You probably know which one I'm talking about. You, yeah. You yeah. jumped off the trampoline, man. So it's 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 crazy for you to be such a tiny frame. And and have that much that much power in, in, in those hips, man. It's, that's crazy. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna talk a lot of transitions, right? So you decided, and we kind of we're gonna kind of work backwards, right? So you right. decided to leave the University of Alabama early to enter the NFL draft, right? The Texans took you with their first round pick. How was that transition? And like, what did you learn early in your career? about the game, about yourself, you know, that helped you, you know, make it to now be an 11 year guy. Right. Um, yeah, like you said, I, um, I, I, I decided to, you know, forego my, my senior year and to, uh, enter the draft, which was kind of frowned upon, you know, and at, you know, the university of Alabama, you know, Coach Saban definitely wasn't on board with it. And what he said goes in terms of everybody else in that organization there, because it's, you know, it's kind of like an NFL organization. But anyway, anyway, um, this is one of those things, man. For me, I, I felt like it was nothing else that I had to prove. I felt like it was nothing else that I can do. You know, um, I, I had been the starter ever since my my freshman year. I was freshman All American. You know, I um, I started every game as a college player. You know, uh, I was durable. I made a ton of plays. Uh, even entering my my junior year to the point where uh, you know nobody would throw at me entire game and he was have to tell me like man listen like just don't get bored you know just kind of stay active but I'm just like man listen like I was one of the best corners in you know in the country so it's just like you know 
I mean, what else is there to stay for? We we went 14 and 0 my last year, my junior year, and we won the uh, national championship playing against the uh, University of Texas. And we had a, a a couple of other you know guys on my team that were going to be first round picks, you know, a, a high draft pick. So, you know, just just kind of weighing my options, I just kept, I just kind of felt like I didn't have anything else to prove on the college level. And so once I kind of made that decision, it was uh, it was actually it was a big deal, you know, in, in terms of having a conversation with Coach Saban. You know, he he was definitely upset about it. And for me, I just you know, it was just something that I, a decision that I sat down with my family with. I sat down with my family and I decided to make that decision, man. And like you said, man, it was a, it was a it was a big transition, but it was the right one for me at that point in time in my career because if I felt like if I stayed another senior year, I didn't. I mean, what else could I have done? I mean. You know, all American and did all the other stuff. I mean, it was nothing else to prove at that level. So that was the next uh, step for me, and you know, stepping in and uh, having a great combine and, and being able to, you know, get picked twentieth overall by the Houston Texans, man. And from there, from college to you know the NFL, that was I think that was the biggest transition for me. And, and coming in and and. And you being there, and I mean, and, I mean, and you you saw my rookie year, man. It was a, for me, it was a struggle, just because you know, being a young kid from Macon, Georgia, you know, and um, and 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 just basically being awarded millions of dollars, and just not having, I mean, it, it it's hard because nobody else in your family has ever been in that situation. So for you, it's like got so many things you want to do and then right. you got friend, you got friends you know you got all this other stuff you want to do so and then coming to a city like houston and right. and you know for me I, i'm one of those guys i love to have fun i want to party i want to do all this and that so <laughs> when i got here it was just like it in, in houston man every they got stuff going on every night so i'm like i'm out every night you know showing up the means late you know, and and I got to a point where, you know, the outside world became bigger than football. But at the same time, I'm still one of those guys where I'm very confident in my ability. You know, I know what I can do. So it's just like, you know, you struggle your rookie year. A lot of, I mean, for I mean, for a lot of guys, that that can kind of, you know, that can kind of defeat you, but you know, and define you as a player. So for me, it was just all about growth and progression, man, just kind of going through that stuff, you know, eliminating, you know, some of the things that, you know, didn't help you as a player and keeping some of the tools that help you as a player. And, and for me, you know, you was one of the guys that, you know, I watched as a rookie, you know, you kind of took me under your wing, even though at the time you were still trying to find your way too. you were just in year two. So, you know, to be be able to watch you, to watch you, you know, kind of, you know, and how you kind of did things and how you, kinda, you know, handled things as a pro as an early age. And um, and and Andre Johnson was huge for me also. So between you two guys, man, y'all became the guys that I looked to to kind of see how you guys handled things on a day-to-day basis, you know, how you kind of carried yourself, you know, how you guys kind of, uh, you know, um, went out to, to, to practice every day and, and how you guys were pros, man. And that, that kind of, you know, you know, molded me into, you know, who I am today, you know, uh, amongst some other guys, you know, later on in my career, you know, going into year, year two, three, four, you know, and, and so forth and so on. But, you know, early on, you two guys were, were huge for me in my career, man. So, um, I don't, I, like I said, I, don't, I, I ain't really sure if I ever took the time to, to tell you personally, man, what you did for me, man, is in, in my career. And I tell everybody, man, Global Queen was huge for me in my career, man, my rookie year. But, you know, I definitely, definitely grateful for that, man. And I definitely appreciate that, man. But um, no doubt, man. That was, uh, that no was, doubt. you guys were huge for me. No doubt, man. It's all, it's all love on my end, man. All love, brother. It, and it was, it was, it was crazy for me, you know. It was crazy for me because I'm, like you said, I was still trying to make my way. And right. they draft they draft you uh, in the first round, and you know how it is. Heck, I'm a fourth rounder, so I'm sitting there like, hold on, now what's what's really going on? They get rid of Dante Robinson, and now it's me and you, and they're telling me to take you under my wings. I'm just like, 
are y'all trying to guarantee that I'm going to be here? Like, what, what's going on? And, and right. you know, one thing about me, man, I've always felt, and, and you probably know this, man, I, I never I never want to, you know, keep keep information away from anybody. I mean, if I knew something, I'm going to try to tell you because, hey, man, we, we're only as strong as our weakest link. So if we're trying to make everybody better. And, you know, it's a pleasure, like I said, man, to be able to hang out with you, man, watch you grow. Uh, help you learn, man, be there with you, you know, through, through the struggles. Your rookie year, it's hard to come in, man, with the pressure of being a first-rounder, man. It's, it's tough, man. And, man, and you handled it. You handled it. You fought through it. And obviously you came out better on the other side. I mean, you've been doing this for 11 years now, man. So that is that is a huge, huge, huge accomplishment for, for you to start out the way you did and to progress throughout your career. And that's what people don't understand. It's all about progression, man. Every day, just man. getting a little better, a little better. And at some point, it's going to click. And the great player that we always thought and that the Texans thought you were is going to show up. Right, right. Yeah, like you said, man, it's, it's it's all about growth and progression, man. And it's one of the um, – that's what I kind of, you know, live by, man, growth and progression, man, whether it's, you know, a new job for anybody, new job, you know, whether it's – you know, marriage or whatever, man. It's it, you know, I, for me, I kind of live by that, and it's just like, you know, every day I try to grow and progress into the progress into the next thing, and you know, just try to become better at it. You know, each and every day. Heck yeah, man. So now that we now that we've talked about that, I want to know this right here, man. What is Bama really like? Like I was listening to your interview uh, that you did with Darius Butler right. on everything in the DB. And, and, and I heard you made the decision to go to Bama almost instantly, even though you had tons of offers coming out of Fork Union Military School, right? So right. we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about that military school in a sec. But Bama, man, what was it about that about them that like hooked you, bro, so quickly? Um, man, it was. Um... For one, man, just when I got there, you ever been somewhere and, you, and they just give you chills, like the, you know, the tradition there, you know, getting a chance to see like the jersey on the wall. You got Sean, Exa- Sean Alexander, you know, and you got all these guys, all these other guys before you, man, and the tradition there, you know, and all the national championships that they, they've won before you, you know, and um, getting in the locker room and seeing some of the guys, man. And uh, just being on campus because that that um, that particular university, man. Once you get off on the the exit, it's just the entire exit is just the, it's it's the campus. It's just campus, man. So it's uh, just getting there and seeing all that, man. And then also with Coach Saban getting that job, I knew with him just leaving the the Dolphins, I knew, man, this is gonna be my best chance you know, to get a chance at the next level because he knows what it looked like. You know, he knows what it looked like, you know, for uh, NFL DB and, and, and getting a chance to play in a pro-style defense, man, at, at the next level is, is is basically everything I dreamed for, man. So from there, you know, it's still in the campus. And and for me, I'm I'm a Nike guy, huge Nike guy. So they, right, took, right. they, they took me in the equipment room. I'm seeing all this Nike stuff, man. <laughs> My eyes, I'm like, oh man, I'm like a kid in a candy store. So I'm like, oh man, that's hey, that's all I need sign to see. Up. So sign me up right now. Yeah. So it's just like, and I'm like, all right, well, can I go home and talk to my parents? They like, nah, like <laughs> this gotta happen today. So I'm just like, well, can I come like next? They was like, no, it gotta happen today. So man, I'll tell them I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm in class the next day. I got all Nike smoke too for the rest of the week, man. I don't get a chance to go home to like Friday, man. I'm in class. I'm, I'm fresh out of military school. I'm in class. I'm like, I'm lost. Like, I don't know nothing about nothing. And, you know, uh, I'm so thankful, man. It's, a, it's some guys on that team just kind of, you know, helped me along the way. You know, those first couple of weeks, man, showed me this and showed me that, man. And, and, and the rest is history, man. So it was, uh, and in my three years there, man, it was a great time, man. The tradition there is like no other, man. And I, and the thing about it, I haven't been back in a while, so I'm, hey. I'm I'm anxious to get back there to be able to see the campus and see, 
you know, obviously they've they've built so much as far as tradition, man, and winning multiple national championships, man. And I saw that. You know, I'm stuff like that. that. He- Heisman Trophy guys, everything, man. And they 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 got so much going on there, man. I'm just, just eager to get back there whenever I get the chance to. It's so hard in the off season to get back, but Whenever I get the chance, man, it'll, it'll be great to get back there and, you know, just to check the campus out, man, because I'm sure that thing has been upgraded since I was there. Heck, man, I, I was looking at, you know, I was just looking at the website to Fort Union, just trying to see kind of what it was like. And, man, it was a lot, it's a lot of guys that came out of Fort Union that, that went on to the league, man. I saw I saw you amongst the, amongst the uh, celebrity, I guess, um, um alumni from from fork union right and yeah. you you were you were only there i saw that you were only there for a semester right so coming out of high school thank god because <laughs> like bro include like let the people know man include myself what is military school like because for me when when i think of military school Like, <laughs> like that's what that's what I think about when I think of military school, bro. Man, Major you, pay. Like, what what is military school like, bro? You got the right idea with that. You got the <laughs> right idea, but just magnified a little bit more, man. Really? I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you, like the run. Like I first got there, and and keep in mind, you know, um, Fort Union Military Academy is in a little town called Fort Union, uh, Virginia. It's um, it's about thirteen hours from where I'm from, making Georgia. So, you know, my parents had to drive me there, and you know, the night before, I actually had to report, and I had to report early because we were uh, we played football, you know, so we had training camp actually before school actually started. So we're there, we get there, and I'm walking around the campus the day before we report, and in my head, I'm saying to myself like. This, like, this can't be it. Like, this ain't this 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 can't be life, <laughs> because it's it's like like some Pearl Harbor like straight military stuff. Like, you go in the room, it's like bunk beds. It's a true bear. It's like bunk beds. <laughs> you got two desks in the room, and it's like a little sink. You got a little cubby, and I'm like, man, nah. <laughs> This ain't this this ain't this can't be it. So, um, and the, the whole night I don't get no sleep, no nothing. And finally, I have to report that next day. So I'm I'm going through it, and that first the first two weeks, I'm calling home and I'm I'm crying on the phone. And this this like after I graduate high school, I'm crawling home. I'm calling my mom, and I'm like, listen, you got to come get me. And she's just like. <laughs> She's just like, listen, we can't come get you. Like, you, you'll be fine. I'm like, no, listen, you got to come get me. Right now. Right now. <laughs> but but it's, it's – okay, so this – during training camp, just before the, the rest of the campus, you know, have to report. So then finally we go through training camp. The rest of the campus get there. And so you got middle school – you got elementary school, middle school, and high school. And you got a post-grad. Um, got postgrad guys, which that's what I was because I had already graduated high school, so I was a postgraduate. And right, it's right. only about forty po- PGs, you know. That's what they call it. It's only about forty PGs, and we specifically there to just play football and to raise our test scores. But it's all girls. Like, it, you, it's no leaving campus. It's no cars. It's no. You got a little thirteen-inch TV, and in in, the, in every room. In the rooms where you got uh, a roommate, you got bunk beds, you got two desks, you got a little sink, you got a little cubby. And so in that little room, my roommate was like 6'4", like 230. And I'm like, man, there's no way we're going to be comfortable in here. I'm talking about I'm like, a little, like a little jail cell. like, And we got to, excuse me, like make our way around each other. I'm like, oh, my God. So then – going on to to everybody reporting man and then it's just full 100 percent military stuff i'm talking about making your beds uniforms inspections three times a week wow. shaving wow it's uh shining your shoes shining the floors it's wow. uh it's random like 
there's random like checks on your room. If they think you got some in your room that you don't supposed to have, which they call contraband, like they like checking your room and contraband could be cell phones, do rags, uh, anything they think you don't supposed to have. They're going to just, uh, just go randomly go ramshack your room and you got to put it back together. It's, um, it's no street clothes. Like just every, like, it's like full on military football was secondary. Wow. Secondary. Like, Secondary, like, and 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 the only getaway for us, for me, like the PG program was football practice. So it was just like I got to practice. I'm like, man, I'm gonna take some of this stuff out on y'all. So it was um, <laughs> right. And I remember one time they they searched my room. I had a do rag. I used to hide my do rag like in my pillow and stuff. They found my do rag. I ended up getting suspended for a game because I had a do rag. And I'm like, man, come on, man. <laughs> But it was it was awful. But at the same time, man, for me, I wasn't a guy. I wasn't one of those guys that was in trouble or nothing as a young age. But it was it was great, you know, as far as having that structure, building that structure in me and stuff. Because once I got to Alabama, man, I was kind of like a um, straightforward guy. I had that structure, man. It was all, you know, uh, coming out of there. It was a it's a lot of stuff instilled in me that you know I kind of learned from there that you know I still carry to this day. So it was. Um, it was it was bad just in, in terms of being a kid from being having so much freedom to going in having no freedom, but at the same time it was uh it was a good situation man for me. I was about to say man, you hit on something I was just about to ask you man. You know is is there something that you learned from military school that you that you still use to this day that's you know applicable to your life? I mean that that was pretty strict. Right. Yeah. No. It's it's it's, it's just um. Just basically handling myself and, and, and carrying myself in, a, in an orderly fashion in terms of just handling my business because when you was there, it was uh, it was marching, uniform, shaving. We had this, the, the inspections three times a week, so you had to make sure you were doing things in an orderly fashion. You know, you had to you got up, they gave you five minutes to get dressed. From there, you had to march. We put the flag up. From there, you went to breakfast. From breakfast, you went to class. It was just. So for me now, it's just like, all right, it's one of those things where I'm always up early. I get up and I'm just like, all right, I got to do this, 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 and this. Just knocking everything out. One by one. And I mean, it's stuff like that. So it's just kind of, it for me, it's everything is all always strategically done in terms of my day. You know, I'm always up early. I'm always 6, 6.30. It's just, that's just, you know, me. And, and, and from, from there, I, I just live by that ever since I left. Yeah, man, that's that's definitely something we're gonna touch on a little later on about that just being you and and you operating in a certain type of way. I got I got definitely a question that I want to ask you for that. But right now we're gonna go into the the fan question. So I started doing a uh, I started doing um, a a giveaway for for the fans for the people that tune in to the show, watch us. Um, interested in support, so I give away. I'm giving away pictures, um, signed, personalized to them. Going to autograph them, and so we got our first question, and we're going to cut to it. The first winner is Cole Fawn. Cole Fawn is the first winner, and his question was, "How did you overcome adversity and struggles in high school?" to be noticed by college scouts. You know, we're going to talk about some of the things that you dealt with as a kid, but how did you overcome that just to be, to be recognized? Um, just, just maintaining and, and continuing to work, man. We're not all, all, all of us, you know, in terms of our athletic ability, we're not all the same, but with that being said, we can all still work, you know, towards our goals. So for me, it was just all about continuing to work. At a young age, I always know I wanted to play, you know, big time college football. I always know I wanted to play in the NFL. So for me, I wasn't going to let anything, you know, uh, knock me off of that path. So I did things and strategically in terms of, you know, put myself in situations that, that I can, you know, one day accomplish that, whether it was, you know, my friends, you know, wanted to play video games and all that stuff. I was always that kid that was outside with the football or outside with the basketball. So for me, it was just all about, you know, um, just just doing or taking the necessary steps and doing what I need to do 
to continue, you know, my my uh, my growth and my my progress as a as a young kid to to be able to to follow my goals and 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 don't be and, and don't be afraid, you know, of failure. You know, it, I mean, it's it's gonna happen. Like, but at the same time, you got to continue to work. You got to continue to strive for what you want and, and and continue to chase your goals. Right. That's that, I mean, that's a huge that's a huge thing, man. Like going after it, man, and not letting anything that you know you deal with anything that you uh face with stuff that you can't even control you know stop you from going after what it is you you really want to get to man so that's that's a great story to be able to talk about man that thing that you overcame and that's going to lead into our second fan question our second fan question winner is brian simon um obviously we know the path that you have and the things that you've done um, with your mom and, and, and your sister and, and the cancer and your family. So Brian, his question is, uh, you have a Kareem Jackson Foundation that supports women and children battling with cancer. Um, what is it like to make a difference in their lives through your foundation, your program? Um, for me, man, it's great. You know, um, I mean, growing up and seeing two women, you know, about a cancer, my mom, my two, being a two-time breast cancer survivor, my sister being a leukemia survivor, man, just growing up and seeing their struggle, seeing what they went through, you know, from from my sister being in remission and having to get back into the world and to, do, to, to being able to do certain things, but still, you know, not having a full head of hair and, you know, and, and, and how some of the kids treated her and, and my mom going through the same thing, man. It was, uh, um, it's for me to, to get a chance and, and to be in the situation that I'm in, for me, it was, it was always about, you know, having a chance to affect some other lives. You know, um, I, I know the toll that cancer takes on the family, um, firsthand. So, uh, I, I, and I always told myself, you know, once I got a chance to to, to be in a situation or be in a position where I can start uh, my foundation and support some of these other families and support these women and help through the, help them through their struggle and stuff like that, man, I was uh, I was gonna jump at that opportunity. But um, for me, it's great to be able to do that, and and you know, um, I I would say that's as equally as poor, as important for me you know, as, as in, you know, being out there on the field and stuff like that, you know, to be able to affect some other lives outside of football and when it comes to, you know, breast cancer and, and, and pediatric cancer. Man, that's great. And I remember, I remember back when, when we were young, man, we worked together with, with the candle lighters. That was a lot of fun. Just being able to affect so many people, man. And so many kids, a lot of people are struggling. A lot of families are struggling, man. So I know there's a ton of people that appreciate what you do. Uh, with, with your foundation and and all the help and, and the programs that you, you, you've you done, man. And so that leads to our last question. Our last winner um, is Nick Schmucker. Nick Schmucker. Um, his question is, I was dealing with the family illnesses at a young age. How's, how has that affected you both as a player and as a person, and additionally, how did this play into your love of tattoos, man? The body art, tattoo parties, and all that good stuff, man. Um, I mean, for me, dealing with it at a young age, it was, uh, and, and I'll say this to this day, man. My my mom and my sister, two of the strongest women that I know, man. Just seeing their battle, you know, for me, just kind of instill, you know, that strength to in me on another level. Even you know, with with going through different things and struggling through different things, man. I just always think back, you know, what they went through, you know, um, and, and, and the way they was able to overcome and, you know, and, and still, you know, find some type of some type of joy and be, to be able to smile, man. That's that's some strength. So, you know, for me, uh, I, I look at it and say, man, if they can still, they was able to still smile, you know, then, you know, I, I have a ton of a strength to, to continue to do whatever it is that, you know, I need to do or want to do. And as far as the, the, the body art, you know, um, it's just something I just kind of adapted, man, at a young age. Uh, I think I got my first tattoo when I was in the 10th grade. And from there, 
every summer, man, I just been getting tattooed. Um, I had a couple of appointments this past uh, this past off season. They ended up I ended up having to cancel because of COVID nineteen. But <laughs> looking to reschedule yeah, here in the next couple of weeks, man, and and. You still got me? Yeah, I'm here. You here? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, I think I got you now. But um, it was just 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 something, man. Uh, I just kind of uh, grown to grown to love in terms of the body art, man. And I got a little bit of everything on me. And uh, G, you you've been my guy, you know, <laughs> for, so, for so many years, man. So many tattoo parties, man, that we we we've thrown over the years, man, and. The body art just kind of, we just kind of, for me, I just, we, I'm sure you same with you. We just kind of fell in love with it, man, and and being able to, you know, put some stuff on our body that you know kind of means a lot to us, that's near and dear to our heart at the same time, man. To be able to show off these different artists, man. So, um, and and I just just telling my guy the other day, Vaughn, man, that I'm I'm fiending for some ink, man. So. <laughs> Man, I'm tired of that needle, bro. <laughs> Man, and, and I say that every time, but after a couple months go by, I'm like, ah, oh, I, I need some, I need some ink, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm fiending for some ink right now, man, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting like a two, three day session in, man, to, 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 to finish these sleeves on my legs. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Man, I see a lot of a lot of stuff on the legs, man. A lot of portraits, man. Some some iconic people. Muhammad yeah, exactly. Ali, Martin Luther King, right. man, that's 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 some iconic type of people, man. To have that, to have that on your leg, man, got got to feel feel special. But yeah. another thing, man, I want I want to kind of jump to uh, a different type of segment, right? So everybody, a lot of that stuff is very motivational, inspirational to people to see how you overcame all that stuff, man, that you dealt with in your life and was able to go to military school and. You know, you taught me a lot of stuff about military school. Like I said, I, I didn't really know what military school was like. But right. a lot of people see all the pictures of you dressed to the nines. And, you know, I think it's safe to say a majority of the people, they probably go along with the stereotypical idea that Kareem Jackson is this typical athlete. He buys all this high-end designer clothes and all that good stuff. But... Like, what sets you apart? Because I know you personally, and you truly, truly love fashion and artwork. We can see the tattoos on your body. But you truly love fashion and artwork, man. Like, what, what right. sets you apart? Man, just the, um, for me, it's, it's all about the uniqueness of being able to, you know, express myself. You know, um, for me, obviously, when I'm getting dressed, you know, um, in, in terms of my, my fashion, just how I'm feeling that day, man, because you can have so many, you can go through so many moods and in terms of a day and how you feel, man. And and by the time you, when you wake up, by the time you get ready to go do something or get dressed, man, your moods can change so much, man. Right. So to, to be able to express that through your fashion, man, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, um, I, I, I just try to, you know, wear that and, and, and try to be that person, you know, when I'm getting dressed, you know, um, I mean, a lot of people may think, you know, it's, it's, it's certain people that dress me in this and that, but one of those guys that I, I go in the closet and I sit there for hours and hours and it's just wow. like, and, 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 and it's not because I have a ton of stuff, it's just because I can't really, in my mind, I may be feeling a certain type of way, but if I, I look at someone and put something together, and I'm just like, ah, that's not it. Like it, it. It has to, it has to really like click for me to be like, this is it. And it, and it takes. So say if I if I know I'm going somewhere, I wake up in the morning like, oh, I got to do so and so tonight. Like I got to start thinking about it right then. Like, <laughs> right, I know. What am I going to wear? Even if I put something in my head, like, all right, well, I got this, so I'm gonna wear this. So by the time. I get to to the time where it's time to get dressed. It's just like my whole mood may change. You know, the weather may change. You know, There's so many factors go into you know getting dressed and you know um my my fashion and and and, and how I feel and and what I what I want people to see and what I want people to perceive me as once they they you know see me out and you know and stuff like that because you you you're only as good as you know. Um, that first, first impression, impression. Man. 
that first huge. impression. And so when people see you, for me, I want them to be like, you know, well dressed guy, you know, uh, oh, that's that's Korean, well dressed guy, whatever, whatever. But at the same time, it's just like it's so much goes into that, you know, for me. So it's just, it's just like I, I I try to sit on every idea I have and 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 I try to put it all out there. And, and I, like I said, I, I wear my my feelings and my thoughts on my sleeves when it comes to fashion, and you know. Um, and no, nobody addresses me, you know. Um, other than when I, when I, I, I mean, obviously, I got somebody that do do my suits, but that's a collaborative effort, and you know, and that's, and that takes months of of me and him just bouncing ideas off each other's, you know, me telling him what I'm thinking, you know, right, what colors right. I'm liking, you know, you know, the uh, season and and, and and what I've seen, you know, throughout, you know, the summer and all this and that, man. So it's a it's a collaborative effort, man, and you know, and and for the most part, man. You know, that's that's just who I am, you know. Right. I mean, you definitely you definitely love the fashion, man. I've been to your house, man. I've seen uh I've seen your your shoes, I've seen your cars. I'm gonna ask you a question about, about those those white cars here in the set. But like <laughs> like like real quick, just tell me like right now, who who's like your favorite designer? You know what I'm saying? Who's your favorite designer? And um, and, tell, and tell me your favorite piece of art that you have right now. Man, uh, right now, my favorite designer, ooh, Dior is doing some crazy stuff, man. Christian Dior is doing some some amazing stuff. Virgil's always a a, a go to for me. Um, right, he's right. doing some great great stuff for Louis. Um, believe it or not, man, I'm you know Nike. Nike's always that's a, the comfortable, um, man. That's the comfortable. I, 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 and the thing about it, even with having so many clothes and shoes, man, I'm always in Nike. Nike. Uh, Nike pants, Nike sweatshirt, like, you know, uh, a Nike T shorts, whatever, you know, and, and I very seldom actually get dressed, but it's the same time. I mean, it's uh, uh, Preston Heron, you know, I'm all over the place with my fashion, man. It's, it's, it's nothing I won't wear, man. If I see it, I like it, you know, I, I, I'll try to get it. But um, those are a couple of my, my, my favorite, um, designers right now and in terms of artwork man I, I i and it's crazy you asked me about art man because i've been i've been a huge i've been i've been into art you know uh just maybe like the last year and a half maybe two years i've been huge into art i've been buying a lot of art lately um what you been get i mean i um, kind of see some of the stuff that you post on post on the ground yeah, so I my I got a guy out here, my guy uh Frankie Cordona, man. Yeah, he he yeah. does uh he does a lot of like dope pieces um in terms of action pieces pieces for me, you know, a lot of iconic, you know, figures, you know, Martin Luther King. Um I have him do I have him, you know, do some customized pieces and um it's it's crazy because you asked me that because I, I actually it's actually a piece that, you know, a retirement piece that, you know, um I wanna get done for you. That I got done for oh, for snap. Dre, that was a <laughs> I, that was a secret, but <laughs> good questions, good just questions. At, yeah, just just act like you ain't hear that. But anyway, but um um, it's, he he he's he's one of the dopest artists out here in Houston, man. He does some amazing work. I, I got another guy that I deal with out of uh, Miami. Uh, that I got a couple pieces that he's done for me, my place in Florida. Um. Also, and he he done some some pieces for me and my my place my place in uh in Denver, man. So I've I've recently grown to be a collector over the last year and a half, two years in terms of in terms of art, man. So um, it's it's, it's actually you know in in terms of expressing yourself, you know, and stuff like that, man. It's it's been great. That's dope, man. So I said I was gonna ask you about this, and I've been wondering about this for a long time, and I see it. Every car or vehicle that I've, I think I've ever seen you with, I don't know, I maybe have seen one. I don't know, but you never, you never seen me in every, nothing other than white. Every vehicle I've ever seen you with has been white, bro. Like, like, what, 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 what is that, man? Like, where did that come from? Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It's no, it's no real answer behind that. Um, <laughs> My first car my dad ever bought me was black, and then my second one was white, and then it just kind of grew on me. 
my second one I got, I think my junior year, uh, started my junior year in college, and that white just kind of grew on me. So I'm like, man, I like, I really like this white. So from there, I ended up uh, getting drafted, and it's just like, I bought, I bought a car. I was like, I'm gonna go white, and then from there, I was just like, that's it. That's I, it. Got to be white. Oh, white. Right. Now you and get then, stuck. And then also, I'm a creature of habit, so it's just like. <laughs> This, this for me is this white just look. I mean, it's it, it looks good, man. And and then I I I, I mean, I'm not one of those people. I, I don't really care to you know see you know a blue car, a red car. You know, if I got you know it got multiple cars, I don't want to see. I don't want to have a blue car. I want to have a red car. I want to have a a, a a champagne car. Like nah, I'm gonna just do them all. You know, all the same. All the same. Yeah. So it's you know, and and that that white had grown me from there. It's just. That's it. It's everything's white, and and even to this day, eleven years in, everything, everything I purchased, everything I got, everything I'll purchase down the line in terms of cars, it's gonna be white. Wow, man, that, that's funny, man. I I actually don't have a, you know, preference like that. You know what I'm saying? But I can get where you're coming from and saying like, hey, man, why would I have a white car and a red car and a blue car? Like that all must still be the same color. You know, we we we, then, we in unison. Yeah, and it's funny because you know every when I get a chance to you know uh, I find I get around to maybe wanting to get something new. My guys, it's like sometimes he's like, "You want white, right?" And I'm just like, "Does, does is that even a question?" Right? I'm like, "Yo, I'm like, man, I'm like, man, I've been dealing with you for for so long. Like, what is that even a question?" And it's just like right. every everything i own is, is in terms of vehicles is white like why would you even ask me that there's no he's way like, it could change and he's just like i don't even know why i asked that i'm like duh but right. uh that's it's just like i said i'm just a creature of habit man and like i said that group that white grew on me at an at a at an early age and at an early time in my my career you know like i say my my junior year in college and from there it's just been everything's just been white man and i and i just stick to it Dang, man, that that is that's crazy, man. But that those little things like that, man, it's honestly what helps you throughout life, man. What helps you in your career? Just being able to be consistent, being able to to find, exactly. being able to find something that you like, something that you can stick to, and just right. diving deep into it and and sticking to your guns and and, and riding this thing out, bro. So it, it, it's it's crazy. I used to I used to tell people and, and, and have this quote that I would tell is I, I read it in a book or something and it was like how you do anything is how you do everything. You know what I'm saying? You can't say I'm a consistent hard worker at football, but like I'm not a hard worker at this. It's just kinda like I mean, if you really think about it, if you if that's who you are, how you do anything will be almost how you do everything, man. So it's great that you can take that consistency, that um, togetherness, and, 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 and use that stuff to, to translate in your career, use that stuff to, to help you out in life. So we don't kind of cover, going the back route, we don't kind of cover from being in Denver to being in Houston, being in Alabama, you want a natty at Alabama, being at Fort Union, you know, all, all that good stuff, man. I know there's a lot of people out there that's gonna be blessed and 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 helped by your story, man. Because you 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 overcame a lot of odds, man. You overcame a lot of odds. Sure. Um, I mean, you you did some incredible things, man. Everybody's journey to the top is, is different. Um, but one thing I know about you, you know, you've always been true to who you are, man. You've always you know, been been freely, you know, open to express yourself. Obviously, we can see it with your fashion, your art. There's truly amazing ways for anybody to express themselves without being censored. And it just evolves with you, man. You've done a great job of just growing over your career, man. I'm proud of you, man. I got, I got, I got one more. I, I got one that, more for man. you, man. Because I know it's Friday night. I had you a lot longer than I even wanted to, man. But I no, definitely, it's all good, man. I, I definitely hey. appreciate these answers, man. This is this right here is a is a veteran. This is a veteran interview, man. I can tell you've been in the league for 11 years talking to the media, man, elaborating, giving back stories. I like it, man. But I'm going to switch over to your family, man. You got you got two beautiful girls, man. 
We talked about him a little bit at the beginning. Wh which one is like you? Which one got your personality? Um, I would say my oldest, uh, Kaylin. She's four now, and she's um. You you just never know what you're gonna get from her, man. What she's gonna say. She has a ton of energy. She um she's just all over the place, man. She has that little. She it, she has a rebuttal for everything, and and at a, and at a young age, it's just like she understands so much, and she's listening to everything, to the point where you have to kind of be quiet around her, and she's still listening even when you're quiet. To 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 find something to say back, so it's just like she she's a lot like me. She's gonna be able to talk herself out of altercation. <laughs> like even even when we trying to get on her, she's just like trying to talk us try to talk us out of it, trying to talk us down. Like no, don't spank me. That right, that right. no don't that no don't spank me conversation, and she's like if she do something, she's like who are you talking to? She's just like myself like <laughs> so it's just like she, she she's a lot like me man in so many ways man and um it's 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 so fun to kind of see her just because in my head i'm i'm looking at her it's just like she she's just like me and her mannerisms like she want to do everything i do we even got like a little handshake we do man it's just so it's so funny it's just so cool to see her on a day-to-day -day basis, as opposed to my youngest. My youngest is, you know, she's so quiet, so soft-spoken, but she has that mean streak in her. So right, it's just right. like, and the thing about it, like, in terms of those two, when they both get up, they're so loving, but more and more the day goes and the sun starts to go down. And around this time at night, eight, nine o'clock, they get to this point where they just, like, start clashing like this and they can't stand each other they can't <laughs> rest and stuff, so you gotta split them up but man my, my oldest is is my oldest is probably a, she's the one that's a lot like me that's dope man that that is dope man i know it's cool to see uh one of, one of your kids in you um it's, it's definitely exactly. definitely cool to see man like i said i've had you wait longer than i even wanted to man i try to i try not to take much of your time especially on a friday night but i'm gonna ask one last question and I know a lot of people, this is, I'm going to ask the fan question tonight, right? I'm going to ask the fan question to Kareem Jackson. I know it probably meant a lot to you. I really don't like to go this route on my shows, but I got to know, man. What was it like coming back home to H-Town and straight balling, bro? I mean, pick touchdown oh my gosh crushing hit dog what man, was that like bro i'm gonna be honest with you man and and the thing about it that entire week just <laughs> you know in, in, in practice and stuff i i you know obviously everybody asking you the questions and you know going back and this and that and i i try not i didn't want to make it about myself and my return to houston man right but Early in the season, when they set the schedule, I circled it, and I'm just like, all right. That's going to be the one. They, yo, they got to see me. They got to <laughs> see me. Just because how everything went in terms of free agency, like with them not offering me no deal and this and that, and, and I came off for of arguably the best year of my career. And I'm just right. like, I'm like, all right, cool. So when, they, when, the schedule set, when the schedule set, I'm like, oh, we're going back to Houston? I'm like, okay. They got to see me. They got They're going to have to see me when I come to so and they saw you. That, man that week that week come around i'm just like all right i'm studying all week studying all week all they asking all these questions i'm just like man listen man hey yo it, it, it's it's about you know this team going there and handling business handling right. business so i got in a i got in the stadium and i started seeing all these familiar faces and i'm just like and and and, and more and more that that volcano just start it, it start it, it got going so I'm just like more and more, I'm just start getting going, getting going, get to get in the pregame. I go out and do my little my little warm up, whatever. I see everybody. Uh, so I'm just like, all right, and get a little. They, they, end, they end up letting me get in a little speech, and I'm still like, I get to the point, 
and we get in that 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 first series, and I think we go score first offensively, defensively. We come out, we get a stop, and then we go score. No, uh, I don't know what happened, but it, then we end up going back on defense, and then that's when we had the scoop and score. We up fourteen, no, and yeah. and and the thing about it, I, I um. Right before kickoff, I'm sitting there, I'm talking to Justin Simmons, and I'm just like, I can kind of feel it in in the stadium. And I, I look to him, and I say, right before kickoff, and I said, can I curse on here? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep it PG. I'm going to keep it PG. Nah, say what I, you got to say, man. I, I just looked at him, and I was just like, yo, we're going to kick their ass. Like, because <laughs> I could just I could just feel it. And I was already, like, I was already like, amped to the max. And I was like, yo, we're going to kick their ass. So. Kick the ball off. We go down and score. We come back. Defense. We get a stop. Offense go out. I don't know if they scored or we got a stop. But then we get the scoop and score. And the next series, I get the big hit. And then I'm just watching everything just happen, 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 happen. Then halftime, we up 28-3. I'm on their sideline. I'm talking, I'm I'm saying all kind of crazy stuff to the sideline. We come out it, we come out again. <laughs> Halftime, we st- in, in the offense still scoring. Still yeah, I'm like, up man, on them boys. Man, everything just started to happen, just happened to happen, man. But uh, like just just the beginning of the game, man, I could just kind of feel how everything was, man. And as a team, man, and, and, and honestly, as a team, we were a good team last year, man. We lost like four games last second field goals, but um, I just that was just our day as a team, man. Everybody, we was all on the same pace defensively. Offensively, they they had it going. They was clicking, man, and um, and, you know, and, and you know, just like I know, man, anybody can be beat on any give any given Sunday, man. You right. go out there, you go out, and you half stepping. If if you if you ain't coming correct, man, anybody can beat you. And that was the day we just go. We went out as a team and we played a complete game, and you know, and and, and fortunately, I was able to go out and play at a high level that day, you know, and and you know it. It was just against, you know, the team that I had just left from, which was, you know, made it a little bit greater for me. But at the same time, man, we was just on the same page as a team and we was able to go out and execute. That's dope, man. I know I know that trash felt good, man. And oh, man. I, felt amazing. When I came back to Houston, you know, I had been gone for four years already, so it was kind of different. And we lost, but it still kind of felt good to get back and, 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 and play. Right. You came back the same season. And it was kind of reversed because you used to ball out against Denver. Every time the Houston Texans played Denver, you used to go ham. And I'm not talking about smacking. Like, and it's crazy that you end up signing with them. That's kind of how it works, man. I tell people all the time, a lot of times in free agency, you end up probably going to the team you balled out against. That's team you it. bought, That's yeah, team you me. bought out against. Not, like I said, I, I had just came off a crazy game the year before against Denver. Right, right. And- it, 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 like you said, it's kind of it kind of happens that way, man. But every um, time, every time, man, that's that's dope, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate I appreciate your time, man. man. No doubt, man. I appreciate hey. you being open too, bro. Man, I'm here, man. Whatever, whenever you need me, bro. All right, hey, if we can add more people on here, hey, I, I'll be your co-host. Whatever you need, bro. Hey, we can I'm, do that too, now. We can do I'm, that too. I'm, I'm, yeah, maybe we can get Joe on here or a Kush or anybody, man, and, and have a good time, man. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna get you on here because I, I I run I run my channel, man. I kind of teach football um, to help the fans, man. They watch games, man. They, people don't understand the understand. terminology that we speak. You know what I'm saying? You get out there talking about hey, we was in cover four and we was in the box and they ran a double post and the corner got to stay on top. Like they don't know for nah. the most part what a lot of that stuff means, man. So. I started this channel just kind of breaking down, teaching all that stuff, man. So there might be a couple of times where I, I get you on, man. We just talk some football. We didn't kind of talk about life, and I hopefully, hopefully these people know you more for for who you are, not just what right. you do. You know what I'm saying? Right, we, right. Everybody know you're a phenomenal football player, but now they can see more of why you are like that, how meticulous you are, you know, off the field, and that, and that's so credible. Hopefully, you've gained some more fans. I know a lot of my subscribers at this point on my channel are Detroit fans, man, and they were super excited that, you know what I'm saying, you were coming into the DB room. So I definitely appreciate you coming in, man, taking your time. And I will get you back on the show at some point and we can talk some football, especially. Hopefully I get you oh, on. Definitely. Y'all get to play this year. I was going to say, y'all get to play this year. You know, I know Dion do you ball you get the call. I'm about to I'm about to figure something out because Hey man, yeah, you got you got to. You got to. You got to do it. No, hey, there's no reason why you should, man. You got to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, man, I know it's Friday night, man. Like I said, 
I, I didn't want you this long, man. I didn't, I didn't want to take much of your time, but I do appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna let you get out of here, man. Um, yes, Detroit fans, all my subscribers, say thank you to Mr. Kareem Jackson. Let's hey, man, give Mr. Kareem Jackson a round of applause. Man, I appreciate you having me, man. Uh, all the Detroit fans, appreciate you guys. Uh, Green Boy 25, y'all can see it there, man. Check me out, man. Uh, Kareem Jackson Foundation. We got a lot going on coming up, man, when this thing, uh, this coronavirus thing blow over, man. So just look forward to that, man. And um, it's a great cause. And all the info on KareemJackson.org. And, you know, other than that, man, hopefully we can convert some of you guys to Denver Broncos fans, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Like I said, I appreciate you, man. I'm going to let you get out of here, bro. I'll hit you up, man. We can link. Man, hit me, bro. We got a link, man. We got to, man. But uh, I appreciate you, like I say, having me on, man. And uh, I'm sure I'll catch up with you in the next day or so, the week or so, whatever, man. Come over there and wrestle with them boys or whatever, yes, man. And uh, grab some dinner or something, man. But I appreciate it, bro. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, bro. No, I, I, Much love, bro. All right. Same to you, bro. Yes, sir. So, you guys, that was my guy, Kareem Jackson. Hope you guys enjoyed that stream, man. It's very cool stuff. Like I said, I learned a lot myself. I, I knew Kareem went to military school, but I showed a clip. I didn't even know what military school was like. I thought it was kind of like major pain. And from the sounds of it, it is kind of like major pain. So, hey, man, I'm Glover Quinn. It's Friday night. I didn't want to keep you guys this long. I'm glad you guys stuck with it throughout the show. I appreciate you guys. Share this with a friend. It'll be up. Love you guys. Thank you guys. Send out, follow, follow the DB Room on Instagram so you can see who's next week's guest. So you can send questions in because y'all thought y'all think I was lying. I got pictures right here, tons of them that I'm going to be sending out. Yes. All types of good, cool stuff. And another thing I want to do is I think I'm almost to a 1,000 subscribers. Wow, it was crazy in, in a month to almost be at a 1,000 subscribers. I definitely appreciate the support for this channel. So I'm going to give away something else. I was going to start a, with a, like, a signed jersey, but I was like, you know what? That's kind of setting the bar high to start. So I'm going to start with a signed football. Okay, I get to a thousand subscribers. We're going to go a signed football to somebody. Um, I'll figure out how I want to pick the people. Um, so send your questions in um, for next week's guest. Like I said, I'm going to post it on my IG once I get it confirmed. It'll probably be next Friday again because I've got a lot of stuff going on. But send send your questions in so you can have a chance to win one of those pictures. It'll be signed. The people that won, email me with your name, your address, so I can get that sent off to you. Enter for next week's. I'll post the um, the guest. And like I said, once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a signed football. So tune in to the, the DB Room on Instagram so you can figure out how you can win the sign football as an appreciation from me to you on helping me get to 1,000 subscribers in, I think, less than a month, okay? So from me to you, man, you guys know how I like to do it, man. Peace. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we out.